and Wayne bought my entire store. So I'm closing up shop and we're shutting down YouTube because I ain't got nothing left to sell. He just bought everything. So I don't even need to buy that shed. I called him today and said, I don't need the shed. Wayne bought everything I had. So at any rate, I guess this is the last show. <laughs> Hello everybody, welcome back to Commonwealth Picker. My name is Kevin and we're in the eBay cave and my voice is just about back. Thank goodness. So I hope, we, I hope you guys enjoyed the video yesterday. We are going to do a sheet like we did for the happy little accident on how much money we're going to make off of that particular sale. And I got to tell you, I almost didn't go to that sale. If you haven't seen the video yet, you got to go back and take a look. I almost didn't go to that sale. I was tired, it was a long week, it was a Saturday, I was starting to get sick, and I had already talked to a few people who had gone to that sale, and they were resellers, and I'm like, well, maybe I shouldn't go there, and I'm like, you know what, it's four miles up the road, I'm just going to take a chance, I'll go check it out real quick, and I'm very glad I did. Maybe we're going to have you guys comment below and give us an estimate of how much you think we're going to make. Now, it's going to take a long time to sell all that stuff, so... I don't think we could run a contest like how much money are we going to make, but I'm going to make a guesstimate of how much we're going to make on that. And I'm going to write it down and I'm going to give it to Blue Ridge Mama. And then you guys make a guess down below and whoever's closest to that number will send, a, will send an animate off to you. So we'll give it a shot. So my guess on the happy little accident haul, and some of you still haven't gone back and looked at that video. Just type in Commonwealth Picker Happy Little Accident and you'll see a, a thumbnail of Bob Ross. We spent 200 bucks, and we made one sale from that today, and it's getting us really, really close to $2,000. My prediction was $2,500, so we're pretty happy with that as we get closer and closer to Christmas. We'll probably cut that one off at Christmas, even though we have some things that we still haven't sold, but we'll, we'll cut that little uh, guess off at $2,500 by Christmas. So we'll start this one up and see how much money we can make. I think we spent 156 bucks at that sale. You might have to go back and, and take a look. It might be 154. I'm not quite sure. At any rate, I am going to show you a little closer about a couple of the items that we got that you didn't get to see really well in there. We bought a ton of plush, but we also got some vintage 80s clothing. This is a single stitch Harley shirt that I want to show you. It's not in perfect condition, but it should go for some money. And we have some other interesting items in there I want to show you too. Today's sales were pretty slow to be honest with you. I think we had made like four or five sales, nothing amazing. And all of a sudden, uh, Wayne showed up. And Wayne bought my entire store. So I'm closing up shop and we're shutting down YouTube because I ain't got nothing left to sell. He just bought everything. So I don't even need to buy that shed. I called him today and said, I don't need the shed. Wayne bought everything I had. So at any rate, I guess this is the last show. No, of course, I'm kidding, uh, but Wayne did make a big purchase. I think he did all his Christmas shopping today, so Wayne, we really appreciate it, and we're going to show everybody what you bought from us today. But before we do that, I'm going to tell you the total amount here so far. I don't know, Wayne not, might not be done yet. Three sixty-eight twenty-five out of the Commonwealth Picker Store and $17, and I don't know what change out of the Homeschool Hustler store. Now, all right, so let's take a look at what sold to anybody not named Wayne first, and then we'll show you what Wayne bought. All right, these are a couple of ping wrench tools for your driver, and I sell them in lots of two because you really can't get any money in ones, and they're hard sellers. I think this is finally it with the ping ones, and they're only going for eight bucks, so I'm not making much money on these. Now, these turned out to be free. I was basically selling them on consignment for quite a while. For a local golf course and eventually I wanted to settle up accounts with them and there was a few of these left and they just said keep them so it's a great strategy for those of you who have a hard time sourcing is get to know your local golf course and every year especially in the winter time they clean out their stash and you can go in there and say hey you know what are you doing with all your head covers if you're going to give them away if you're going to give them to the good wolf you're going to throw them in the trash I'll give you a little bit of money for them or give them all to me and I'll give you 20% of the sales. And I've done that for years. Now, when I have a lot of inventory, it's not huge money. It's not really worth it. But if you're in a place where you can't do a ton of sourcing, 
that's not a bad little idea and get to know a couple of those pros around the golf courses and they may be able to help you out. I've been doing that for years at one particular course and I got a commitment from another course this year uh, that they would do the same if I came back in January and talked to them. And I'm not sure yet if I'm going to do that or not because the time involved with with doing that and the money doesn't always equal out. But who knows? I might. And you can find some gems every once in a while that you can make 20 and $30 off of one head cover instead of doing, you know, making 2 to $3, $4 a head cover. That's not really worth it. But if you can sell 5 or 10 for 20 to 30 bucks, then it's worth your time to go through them. All right, we sold six more of these American flag cross pins that we bought. We got out a great deal at a yard sale about a year ago now, and we had hundreds of them. And this isn't the last set, but I think Wayne took took everything we had left, so we'll show you that in a minute. This particular one out, one went out to somebody called Patriot Collector, um, or something like that, Patriotic. And so this is a really nice sale of $19.95 for these six pins. All right, so here's a giant tote full of creative memory stuff. So I don't know what's in here because my wife did this listing. Vintage created, creative memory zip-up binder loaded with stickers, borders, die cuts, all kinds of stuff. So this thing is heavy. I mean, this sucker is probably 15 pounds. Eh, maybe not, 12 pounds, something like that. It's a pretty heavy thing. And it sold for $60 plus shipping. She put a lot of work into this, and, and it's a happy little accident sale. So this is going to add to our total, and we'll show you what we're at with our $200 investment and see how uh, see how much money we've made so far. All right, and so my hieroglyphics, as Blue Ridge, Blue Ridge Mama would say, uh, $1,940. I haven't even put it in here yet for the Creative Memories. $49 profit on the Creative Memories after shipping and fees. $1,940 off of our $20 investment. So we're almost to $2,000. My goal was $2,000 by Thanksgiving. And I'm pretty sure we're going to get there. Matter of fact, I know we're going to get there because we haven't done the antique mall video yet. And we've probably sold, maybe not $60, but we've probably sold $40 to $50 worth of happy little accident sales out of the antique malls. All right, this is a History Channel dvd lot there's four dvds all brand new in the package actually i take it back three are brand new in the package and this came from that yard sale where we bought that whole lot of dvds 96 of them for 20 bucks and so this sold for 24.71 we're getting really close after fees and after shipping to making that 20 dollars back just in this lot and we've already sold two or three of these lots we've sold some of those dvds at the booth already We've sold a couple of new ones, uh, family ties sold. So we're already well into the profit. My initial estimate of $150 profit off of those DVDs is probably a little low. We're probably going to make closer to $200. They're selling really well. All right, so this is what Wayne bought. So Wayne's been sending me messages, and he bought some cassettes not too long ago. And he said, hey, you got anything else? And he gave me some ideas of the things he might like. So I started looking through what I had. I went to Bell Treasures, one of the antique booths, and I started pulling some things that he might like, took some pictures of them, and asked him what he wanted, and he picked quite a few, and we made one giant lot, and we made him a pretty good deal on all these cassettes. So just to give you an idea, I ended up, I got to tell you, I set these on top because these are from my personal collection, Wayne. So I listen to cassettes all the time in here, and this is one I listen to often. This is not one I listen to often, but I listen to it at Christmas because it reminds me of my mom. She used to listen to this all the time, so uh, Commonwealth Grammy, if you're out there, you probably know, sitting in that van listening to this thing, we did that quite a bit. So I like to listen to it at Christmas just for nostalgia's sake. The Beach Boys I like just because I'm from California, and it's just a kind of good memories uh, the Carpenters same thing I listen to them pretty often just because of my mom of course and there's, they got some good stuff a uh, little Simon and Garfunkel I listen to that every once in a while Bridge Over Troubled Waters that's probably one of my favorites Homeward Bound is pretty good Mrs. Robinson of course so those were out of my personal collection Wayne I don't know I don't think I told you that but I pulled them out when you said the Carpenters I'm like well I know I got those I tell you what I had a hard time parting had a hard time parting with this one, and I had a hard time parting with this one. But you know what? 
All that means is that I gotta go back out there on the trail and I'm sure I'll find them. All right, this was a purchase from the Homeschool Hustler store and Reagan just brought me down a couple of thank you notes, one from each of them to thank you for your purchase from the Homeschool Hustler store. And you might even see where I bought this on today's video. If not, I'll put it on a video coming up. I got this from Bryce the Coin Boy. Um, I think, uh, I can't remember. We made a big, a big sale with him. We bought a few things off of him. Told him we'd resell them. And this is getting a little bit of our money back already. I think it's a neat one. And we're going to send that off to you. This was a purchase out of the Commonwealth Picker Store. I love Charlie Brown. This is good stuff. And this one is in great... I think this one's brand new too. I'm not sure how I listed it. I don't really want to open it up at this point. But that Charlie Brown is headed off your way as well. Alright, here is a set of Louis L'Amour. And the Leatherette books, I think they're 1981, and here are the whole set. I think we made Wayne a pretty good deal on these. Maybe, uh, I can't remember what we did, but he said, how much you want on these things, you take an offer on it. And he paid full price for a lot of stuff, but uh, if he asked for an offer, I knew we were sending out so much in one package, I gave him a good deal on them. So I can't remember what the cost were of these, but they're in really good condition. There are a couple of just tiny little marks I could probably get off of that one. And I think one or two of them have a, a little property of. But other than that, they look like they're brand new. So this is a pretty good little set right there. Bought these old lapel pins. These old, uh, what are they, Windcraft. You ever see these old Windcraft ones? And they sell pretty good. I should have listened to Pick and Roll's uh, video on how to get off get off that marker. I, I could probably do that. Anyway couple of San Francisco 49ers. Boy, talk about a tale of two cities right there. Mm. So, uh, right here reseller, you'd uh, probably like one of those, but that's all I got. Sorry. He bought this Olympics ornament from the Atlanta Olympics. I think, Wayne, I think he said you're from Georgia. So, that's a good one. He bought all of these, and I think he bought one set at full price, and I'm like, look, I can't make you pay full price for all these. We're going to make you a better deal so we we sent him an offer on those he bought this old set of piedmont cards still in the package and i ended up finding these after the sale and so i made a gift of these to him because i didn't want to go through another process and he had already bought so many so we're going to throw those in for free and this one i found as well and this one's kind of funky looking, but it has one of my favorite songs on it, which is Mungo and Jerry's in the summertime. So we're going to put that one in there as well, Wayne, and hopefully you enjoy that. And I'm also going to throw in a couple of cassette holders that I took out of the antique booths. Uh, we don't charge much for these things anyways, and it might protect them a little bit. I don't know what I was charging at the booth anyways. $2.50 for the case. And then a plastic one here, so we'll throw those in. Throw those in for you. I think that might be it. I'm not quite sure. So <laughs> that's an awful lot. So we'll get that all packaged up for you and send it on its way. And hopefully there's a lot of happy people at Christmas. And I knew you said you had a cassette deck or a stereo or something that you got. So that ought to last you a long time getting some of those. I'll just give you a close up of some of the ones. Ario Speedwagon. It's a little racy cover right there. I don't know. Elton John. Billy Joel, Billy Idol, Creed, Led Zeppelin, Paul McCartney, Beach Boys. What's this one? Another Billy Joel. That's a single, Young Guns. John Cougar Mellencamp, Bruce Springsteen, UB40. Oh, UB40. I'm going to have to listen to some Red Red Wine before I, uh, before I ship that one out. Jimi Hendrix, Poison, Grateful Dead. Is that one Rolling Stones? That's the Eagles, Greatest Hits, Police, Madonna, Miami Sound Machine, Aerosmith. So there's two Aerosmiths. Another UB40. I think this is the one that has red, red wine on it. Rolling Stones, another Billy Joel, Hall and Oates, ZZ Top. It's like the bearded picker right there. Centerfield, John Fogarty. Every baseball player's favorite song. All right, there you go. Pretty good lot. All right, Wayne, here is your thank you note from Turner. And here is your thank you note 
from Reagan. So we're gonna add those in and we appreciate your purchases very much. Oh, and there's one more additional purchase that I forgot and that's a couple of Radica games. And we gave him a discount on these. He bought both of them together. So we will put that in the lot as well. These are kind of cool old ones. I think the market on Radica has gone down just a little bit. But they're still decent money makers if you can get them cheap enough. So this is definitely a, a neat old game. I like both of them. Hope you enjoy those, Wayne. All right, well, we got Turner after all to say thank you to Wayne. Can you say thank you to Wayne? Thank you, Wayne. Which one's yours? This this one is mine. That one's yours, and it's a heart. Yeah, and this And Reagan's one is, is an ice cream cone. With a happy face. With a happy face. And, and this you know. is what Wayne bought from you. It's a sticky situation. The Tasmanian Devil. You tired, aren't you, buddy? No, my eye just tickled. <laughs> all right, thank you, Wayne. Hey, we're back here with Bryce, the coin boy, and he's got some stuff. You know, if you don't know, Bryce is kind of an old school picker himself, and he does not sell online. So sometimes when he finds things, he brings them to me and asks me to sell them for him. So sometimes we do consignment, sometimes we'll do a straight sale. I think we're doing a sale on this one. I think we are too. Um, and then if it happens that we make a little bit more money than expected, we'll give him a little bit more. So let me talk about these real quick, and then I'm going to have him talk about these boots because they have an interesting story. So, Hallmark keepsake ornaments aren't particularly great. However, the ones that are branded, the, the Mickey here, we got Winnie the Pooh, and you got the Grinch and the Tasmanian Devil. I have not looked this one up or this one up or this one up. I did look this one up because I figured it would be the best one. My guess is the Tasmanian Devil has a pretty good following too, and that's got some value. This probably has the least value in this one as well, but they'll still sell for something. This one, my little boy loves the Grinch, so I might give him that one for Christmas this year. And I might give my daughter this one. I like to give them one ornament or two ornaments a year just to start their own collection up so that when they move out, they'll have some ornaments to take with them. So these will sell pretty good. Here are some more Disney ornaments. Where'd you get these from? Is it just a Disney store purchase or something? Yeah, else? no, I think they were a Disney store purchase, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, we were cleaning out the well, the reason I found all this stuff is, uh, you know, we were getting stuff out for Christmas. Right. You know, just get everything ready. And these were extra ornaments that we weren't going to use anymore. And uh, we saw them and, you know, Kevin got me hooked on to uh, uh, the eBay app. And, you know, I was uh, doing some pictures. I'm like, wait, these things are actually selling. Yep. So I'll probably sell these online, although I may not. I may put them in the antique booth. And here's another item we'll probably put in the antique booth as well. It is just a cool looking baby blue piggy bank, elephant piggy bank. So probably put that in the booth. I've had some pretty good success selling piggy banks in the booth. So I imagine this one will sell. This one will probably go on eBay, but I, I don't know. I might put it in the booth as well. But this is the story. So tell us about this story. All right. Well, um, I have a fa we have a family friend and he actually, uh, you know, served or served around the time of Vietnam and uh, into the seventies in the army. And you know, I was a history teacher. And um, he gave me a whole entire box of all of his stuff when he was in the service that I could put around my classroom or if I wanted to wear or, or have. And um, he gave me these boots. And I remember when I first got these boots, they didn't fit me. So uh, I'm a size 10, these are a size 11. And I you know, had them in storage and then I completely forgot about them. Well, I you know, stumbled upon them a few days ago and um, I knew that they were actually war issued and, um, and well, sir, not war issued, but army issued, and uh, I wanted to look at them, and I found out that, hey, they're actually selling on eBay for pretty well. So I got uh, a hold of Kevin, and then we did some little more research to see what we could do to actually authenticate them that they are real. Yeah, I initially saw them, and I'm like, hey, where, there are no markings. I was looking on the inside, I was looking on the bottom, and uh, Bryce found it here on the top, which I can't believe I missed, but... At any rate, we did find some markings, and that was uh, kind of led us down the road that we're on. So tell me what the markings mean. Well, the markings, I know what majority of them mean. Uh, the 11 right there, that means that's what size boot it is. Yep, yep. The W means wide. Yep. That's for wide foot. Um, this, we'll get back to in a little bit. I'm still, I still don't 100% know what it means, but I have some thoughts of okay. what it may be. And I bet somebody out there will be able to tell us. It were made in, uh, you know, September 1976. Okay. Now, something I found out too is a lot of times when we when they would get these boots, 
Um, sometimes you would get one boot that would be made one year and another one that would be made another. Because they're just basically handing them out to the soldiers and sometimes the years don't match up. Yeah, and this is going to be an example because these ones right here, they're size 11, they're wide. And then you have uh, April 1977. Mm, so, one year after one year, one month after I was born. So <laughs> both of those years, sorry to interrupt, uh -huh. both of those years are after the Vietnam War. So Vietnam, is, Vietnam War ends in 75, but we get out, I think, completely out in 73. Like, nobody's left. I think that's right. And so these are after Vietnam. My guess is, my initial guess was that they would probably have more value if they were issued during the war. But um, Bryce seems to think that's probably not the case. He's done a few comps, and he thinks they're going to hold their value. Plus, they're in really good shape. All right, so tell us what else you got. The other thing else I got is remember the one speculation of what that pH means? Right. The only thing that what I'm thinking, and if I'm wrong, please somebody correct me so you know we're able to know more about these. I think that means Philadelphia or something Pennsylvania. Because okay. the individual that we got these from actually lives in Pennsylvania. And when I was looking online, uh, especially with a lot of these things, it's everything would be the same except for where that is. Mm -hmm. And some had like a T in it, others had like other different letters. You said an AZ in one of them, which yeah. you think Arizona, but you know. Yeah, something that like was. that. So I'm thinking maybe that means that's where, you know, what military base they're getting it from. Okay. But if I'm completely wrong, yo, please, please correct us That'd and let us know. To find out, I'd be curious, and I do see, like I said, a lot of them listed as you know Vietnam era war boots, but this is the same style. So we're gonna give those a shot, and we're gonna sell them, see what we can get for them, and see if we can both make some money. So thank you again, awesome. Brian. Awesome. Thanks for having me. All right.